113 Questions About Evolution with John Perry. Evolutionary question number 16. What is Lamarckian evolution? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. John Perry here. Today, I am going to cheat during my, uh, you know, 113 Questions About Evolution by reading a, a little mini article from Darren Nash's book, Evolution in Minutes. This is I've talked about this book before here in like one of my book review videos. This is probably my most used book on evolution. You know, most books I'll read once. Um, and then, and then actually, you know, by the point that you're teaching evolution, you're teaching a topic of any kind, every time you read a book on that topic, most of what you're reading, you've already read before. It's actually becomes really tedious to read books on your topic of interest because it's just, it's all repetitive but the cool thing about this book is it's just it's got like i don't know 100 little articles in it and they're all super short articles they really only give you just enough to get a taste of the issue that you know that darren is is writing about but because we have the internet now you can read one of these articles and then do a deep dive online Lamarck and Lamarckian evolution. The theory of evolution by way of natural selection describes how the outcome of genetic variation is shaped by selection. Several other models of evolution have been proposed, though, among the most persistent of which is Lamarckian evolution. John Baptiste Lamarck argued that change in organisms was driven by deliberate choice, that they modified their habits by will or effort, and that their biology and anatomy changed in step with these decisions. So they willed their own evolution into existence. And you can hear a lot of people talking about that today, uh, different uh, variations of that today. If you go on like some of like the, the woo-woo spots on YouTube, um, people will be talking about how you can will yourself to evolve and change. And Okay, I might be overemphasizing will here. So what happens is that the environment changes animals strive to survive in that new environment and so they do a bunch of behaviors over and over and over again they will themselves to do these behaviors over and over and over again but it is that repeating of a particular behavior that Lamarck thought would end up exaggerating that trait in this organism's offspring it might be a little bit wrong to say that they will themselves to evolve it's that they behave repetitively and that causes them to evolve in Lamarck's view it's still fairly popular as an idea. There are some arguments made today that cross-generational epigenetic inheritance might be considered a form of Lamarckian evolution, but uh, maybe I'll talk about that here in a, in a minute. Let me just finish the, the article here. Here's a popular example of how this might work. If in every generation giraffes crane their necks upwards in a continual effort to reach ever higher, so their necks, Lamarck proposed, would gradually increase in length. Today we know that this concept of evolution is erroneous. Giraffes did not grow long necks because they stretched a lot, but because natural selection favored the survival of individuals with longer necks. That arose through genetic variation. Lamarckian evolution was surprisingly popular until the middle of the 20th century, especially in France. I mean, the, the guy is French, so it kind of makes sense that his stuff would be popular in France. Yeah, Lamarckian evolution is, you know, it was a precursor to Darwinian evolution. I, I believe Lamarck had published, yes, yes, Lamarck had definitely published before Darwin did. So the idea of common descent, that all organisms share a common ancestor, that was actually a somewhat common idea before Darwin. And so Lamarck and other people were talking about this. And it's actually, you know, you can go back and find even ancient texts where people are talking about the idea that humans are just another type of animal and that we're related in some way to the other animals. So there's a misconception that, you know, the idea of common ancestry was discovered by Darwin. Uh, that's not the case. The, the idea had actually been around for quite a long time before Darwin. What Darwin did is he just discovered this process of descent with modification acted upon by natural selection is what gives rise to adaptations. And, you know, before he had proposed this, Lamarck was proposing that, you know, we, we will our adaptations into existence or by doing a particular behavior repetitively, we cause uh, our own evolution to happen down a certain line. 
the data does not support that idea. There is, as I mentioned earlier, this idea that heritable epigenetic changes, so these are changes not in actual gene sequence, but in the way that genes are bundled within a chromosome, and the way that a gene is bundled ends up determining how often it gets used by the organism that has it bundled in that particular way. So there's there have been claims that uh, changes in how DNA is bundled that can be passed on from parent to child, that those are could be considered a style of Lamarckian evolution. <sighs> it's it's something that I really I, I'd like to address that with actually having a guest on that that makes that claim, because it's really it's it's something that I just don't I don't see the point of making those sorts of statements. The way that DNA is bundled is temporary; it's not permanent. In order to get permanent evolutionary change, you need to have changes in the actual nucleotide sequence, and epigenetics doesn't do that. So, uh, I mean, there's a way that you can kind of you know muddy the waters by saying, well, now that the gene is bundled in this new weird way, well, that means that the selection pressures on all the other genes have changed because now this gene is going to be, for at least several generations, it's going to be behaving differently than it would otherwise. So you could say that that is causing genetic changes to occur. Um, so anyway, it does get a little bit complicated and muddy. Most people are like, no, I mean, let's talk about epigenetic changes and how they affect evolution, but let's not try and rebrand evolution because of the fact that epigenetic changes can occur. So, and I, I agree right now. I mean, I'm pretty solidly on that latter group. I don't think we need to rebrand the field of biology because we discovered that, uh, you know, genes can be packaged differently sometimes. It would be interesting to have someone on that is a researcher in this field and that, that is really strongly trying to make that case so that we can get, you know, some more opinions than just my own on this matter. And, and Darren's, Darren, of course, worded things fairly strongly in his article here. Lamarckian evolution is a thing of the past. That's Lamarckian evolution in a nutshell. The rejected theory of evolution that is still somehow constantly popping up again as time goes on. So, next question.